Offering yourself up for science is a noble endeavour, but be warned, it can hurt like hell. I've just returned from a rather painful adventure around Australia with a group of researchers on an extraordinary mission. While most of us run from the dangerous creepy crawlies of the outback, they deliberately seek out spiders, scorpions and centipedes and then invite them to attack. The scientists' aim is to get bitten to understand the severity of the stings they inflict. They then use the venom to develop much-needed medicines and painkillers. And guess what? It's work that's already saving lives. The Australian outback is a thing of beauty with its unique red dirt and even more unique wildlife. And hidden here in this sea of sand and spin effects, a species that could both kill you and incredibly save your life. This spectacular place is Urumina Station, smack bang in the middle of the Northern Territory, a part of the world that isn't just a draw card for tourists, but also scientists looking for medical miracles. Sam. Hey. Good to meet you. You too. So this is your research lab. It is. Dr Sam Robinson is a biopharmacologist. In short, that means he studies animal and plant toxins with the hope of discovering new, life-changing medicines. And his experiments are unorthodox, to say the least. He's basically a human lab rat who gets stung by potentially deadly bugs, all in the name of research. You're the embodiment of no pain, no gain. Exactly, yeah, 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 exactly. You know, when you get a whopping great wasp and you know that it's gonna, it's gonna hurt like you're getting your fingers smashed with a, with a hammer. Oh. <laughs> and it's that anticipation, it's just awful, building up to that, you know it's gonna hurt. And then you test it and you find out something new and it, it, it supersedes that and it's, it's a fantastic feeling just to, to know that you've discovered something. When it comes to medical ethics, Sam literally can't even ask people to cop these potent venoms. So that means if he wants to know what they do, the only way to find out is to roll up his own sleeve. There'd be people sitting at home thinking, is this bloke mad? <laughs> My wife asked the same question, actually. There is a real thrill in discovery and finding out something that in all of human history, no one else has sort of known or at least recorded. Um, you, you get a buzz out of it. What's the most painful thing you've copped so far? I was recently in South America and, and collected some wasps. It just smashed my hand. It's like I liken it to imagine having sort of your, your flesh peeled back on your finger and then a pair of pliers just gripping the bone and squeezing. And you know, it's not over in 10 minutes. This was going on for like three or four hours and you're getting to the point where you're thinking, you know, what if this gets worse, you know? There is method to the madness here. In the world of pharmacology, venom and toxins are a treasure trove of new possibilities, helping create the next generation of game-changing medicines. In fact, it's more than likely that a drug derived from venom has saved the life of someone you know. Your secret medicine, I guess, now is not so secret. It's from a snake. Exactly right. It definitely is from a snake. So, yeah, I'm petrified of them. If I saw one, I'd be gone. But, look, I need to thank them at the end of the day. Emma Wilson is serious about her health and, in 2015, was bitten by the bodybuilding bug. She was preparing for the World Championships when that dream came to an abrupt halt because she felt a pain in her chest. So I was perfectly technically in good health on the outside. And mm. then all of a sudden... And on the inside, I wasn't. I wasn't a well person. I went to bed and then I got up and it was... Something was going on. I knew I needed medical attention. Don't know what it was, just something come over. Got myself to the hospital um, and a long story out of it, I was actually having a heart attack without me realising what was going on. The grandmother of two would have died if it wasn't for the work of doctors and now is kept alive by a class of medication called ACE inhibitors derived from the venom of the Brazil viper. 
It's used to treat high blood pressure, heart failure, and often prescribed following heart attacks. If it wasn't for them, then technically be, I wouldn't be here because I need that medication to keep my cholesterol down. This is an orb weaver spider. All right, am I holding this? Yeah. See, your research is supposed to help sick people. Yeah. <laughs> this makes me feel sick. Uh, it's, it's, think of it as doing good for you, you know? It's helping you get over the, uh, the fear. Uh, 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 uh. That'll do, mate. Thank you. To understand venom and the kind of medical potential locked inside it, Dr Sam needs specimens, and lots of them. So when you get bitten, what are you actually looking for? You know, you can liken it to something like wine tasting, where you get a, you get a feel for a different wine, you know, and it, you can describe that differently. Um, you can do exactly the same with stings. You know, wine aficionados will swirl a glass of red, mm. have a sip and, you know, take note of all the different yeah. elements of the experience. Yeah. You're, you're kind of a venom aficionado. Yeah, that's exactly it. So what's this one here? Uh, so what you'll find under the bark of some trees are these assassin bugs, um, and they can give you a pretty painful sting. This sounds like you're talking from experience. Yeah, absolutely. The assassin bug is significant because Sam's team has harnessed its powers for good, hoping to turn its venom into a potent insecticide that'll reduce our dependency on chemicals in farming. And he assures me that despite its ominous name, the critter isn't actually a killer. Instead, scientific journals describe its sting politely as just intensely painful, a feeling Sam has copped plenty of times, all in a day's work. All right, well, if it's not going to kill me, I guess as part of my commitment to figuring out how your job works, I guess I've got to give this a go. Grab it with your finger and your thumb and it should sting you. Just, oh, jeez. I'm a little bit scared here, Sam. Yeah, you should be. <laughs> OK. And so, just how painful is it? Oh, well, oh, this comes in waves. Yeah. <laughs> you choose to do this. <laughs> Deep in the central Australian desert, I'm about to cop a sting from an assassin bug. With me is scientist Dr Sam Robinson, whose unorthodox research methods could lead to the discovery of groundbreaking medical treatments. Oh, I can see the venom coming out, but he's not stinging me. Deliberately inflicting pain in yourself definitely defies all logic. But I'm certainly not doing this just for fun. The work that Dr Sam Robinson does, the pain he inflicts on himself and me, it could one day help save someone's life. Oh, ah, there he is. <laughs> so this is your day job. <laughs> Excuse the embarrassing arm flapping, but nothing can prepare you for this pain. Hopefully my reaction shows you oh, this seriously waves. hurts. You choose to do this. <laughs> oh, it's just like every now and then little darts of pain. Yeah. And it started off there. I could feel it widening into my hand and mm -hmm. up into my arm. Oh, ah, 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 ah. oh, there's a second wave. Putting myself up as a scientific guinea pig will give Sam vital insights into how venom works, which is the foundation block of miracle drug discovery. Oh. So that'll last about five, ten minutes. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah that's okay. not long now. So for all the pain you've been through, mm -hmm. how does this help medical science in the future? Yeah, so pain is common. Different types of pain are really common. There can be side effects from injuries or medication, all sorts of things. Um, and at the moment, medicine doesn't have the tools to deal with it. We rely a huge amount on uh, opioids, so things like uh, morphine and codeine. Um, but these have massive problems outside of, of abuse as well. Um, so we need alternatives. So the goal really here is if you can find new chemicals that cause pain, these are going to tell you new things about your pain pathways. And we can use that information to develop painkillers. And we've done that with some of the work um, that I've been doing. After a couple of days in the desert, we're off to the other side of the country, to a very different environment, the rainforests of southeast Queensland. Here, we meet up with Dr Sam Robinson's colleague, Professor Irina Vetter. She's the director of the Centre for Pain Research at the University of Queensland, and we're on the hunt for one of the most dangerous trees on the planet, the Gimpy Gimpy, aka the suicide tree. 
Covered in spines, wow. These aficionados rate it as the third most painful sting in all of Australia. But yep, you guessed it, this tree is also a potential lifesaver. You love this tree, don't you? I do love this tree, yes. Why? The Gimpy Gimpy activates your pain sensing nerves in a way that we've never seen before and we've discovered a new pain gene. Of course, when you discover um, a pain gene that when you activate it, you cause pain, then the flip side is if you block it, we might be able to inhibit pain and that's really important for people with chronic pain. These two have been willing to be hurt by the plant that they love. So I had to see what all the fuss was about here too, from the nasty spikes that cover the Gimpy Gimpy's leaves. Looks nasty. It'll You're... be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> it's just pain. It will hurt, but it won't harm you. Okay, here we go. Things I do for this damn job. Oh, yep, there it goes. You did notice it. Yep. You feel them go in. Oh, the oh, there it goes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's a strange, very different feeling to the yeah, assassin good, bug. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. You guys <laughs> like this. Yeah. This is not fun. So the welts from the suicide last, tree you know, are nasty. Uh, and while the assassin bug pain lasted for about 10 minutes, I'd be feeling this one for days. I'm glad I've experienced it, and I hope to never do it again. I'm glad you enjoyed <laughs> it. Back at the lab at the University of Queensland, Irina can show why the Gimpy Gimpy sting research is so important. The hope is that it will one day provide critical pain relief for cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy. Patients receiving certain types of chemotherapy develop um, very debil debilitating pain that presents as cold hypersensitivity or temperature hypersensitivity. Um, and the Gimpy Gimpy happens to do a very similar thing. And so we can understand the molecular mechanisms and then use that knowledge to treat patients receiving chemotherapy. The pain that a lot of chemo patients suffer is so bad that they end up pulling out of the treatment. So if you can help them deal with that pain, you could end up helping save lives. Yeah, absolutely. Um, at the moment, we basically have no, nothing to treat this. Um, you can either reduce the dose of the chemo, that's obviously not good for e-cancer, you can just stop the treatment altogether, um, and that's you know very detrimental. So being able to prevent these side effects and treat them effectively is really, really important. And you think you're heading in that direction? I know we're heading in that direction. <laughs> the breakthroughs just keep on coming. Gari, formerly known as Fraser Island, is one of Australia's natural wonders. Famous for its dingoes and dunes, it's a holiday destination packed full of adventure and wildlife, some of which is incredibly deadly. Keep your eyes open for them, don't let them bite you. Professor Glenn King and his research team from the University of Queensland have discovered a new molecule in the venom of one of Australia's most notorious creatures, the funnel web spider, which could revolutionise the treatment of stroke and heart attack. Beautiful. That's a really good one. Really nice. Yeah, great. We found we could give that compound from the spider up to eight hours after the stroke started, and we could still reduce the brain damage by up to two thirds. It was an incredible result. And what we subsequently found is we could also get protection of the heart after a heart attack with the exact same molecule. It must be a pretty awesome feeling knowing that this hard work you've done could save someone's life. It feels fantastic. I mean, the idea that we could potentially have discovered a drug in an Australian spider that could save the lives of people around the world that were having a stroke or a heart attack is, is really very exciting. Harnessing the potential of the world's most deadly creatures, animals that make Australia famous, has ironically turned the villain into the hero. Australia is the kind of the place to be if you're going to be studying venoms. Australia is absolutely the best place to be, and I think it's fair to say Australia is the epicentre of, of venom-based drug discovery uh, around the world. In a medical revolution spearheaded by Aussie scientists, our deadly backyard has become a saviour. And sting-loving researchers like Dr Sam Robinson reckon that the untapped potential of our incredible biological diversity could be the future of medicine. A lot of people don't realise that most of our drugs are either directly derived or actually inspired from a natural source. Um, so in the long run, hopefully we're identifying a whole library of new targets and identify whole new classes of drugs.
For people like you, this is a, a gold mine out here. Yep, Australia is a gold mine. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thank you for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes, which are on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.